everything's working. We have players connecting. We can't see each other, right? These nodes are networks, but also not really networks because right now they are both instanced, but we can't see each other because we disabled the mesh, right? We disabled our player mesh. You can't see them. And so we need to be able to use the networking that we just set up to be able to check if we should disable the mesh or not. If I am the player controlling my player, right? If I am the computer that controls this player, I don't want to show my mesh. If there's other characters that I'm not controlling that are from other players, I want to show their meshes. I want to be able to see those other players, right? But I don't want to see myself or else I'm going to be seeing through my head. So we just need to set that up. So this is all going to be in our player script. So we basically set up everything, but there's a few more node paths we need to set up. We're going to set up one for our camera so we can directly access our camera. So then we can go back in our player right here and I can access my camera and assign that to our camera. So now we have a reference to our camera. Now in the ready function, instead of saying model.visible defaults, we're going to say model.visible equal to not is network master. That doesn't mean anything to normal user. What does not network master mean? Network master, if I'm the player controlling my computer, I'm the one controlling my player, then it's going to return true. I want my model to be invisible when I am the player, when I am controlling my player. So I want my model to be invisible when it's true, but I want it to be visible when it's false. So we're inverting it using not, and this will essentially just toggle the visibility of our model based on if we are player or if we're not the player in the right way. We're going to set camera.current equal to is network master. So if we are the current player controlling our camera, we want to make sure we have that camera set up as the current camera. Because there's going to be like 100 cameras in our scene, right? With all of our players. I mean, obviously we're not going to have 100 players, but you know, we're going to have tons of players. And so all those cameras, Godot needs to know, uh, am I supposed to look at this camera or am I supposed to look at this camera? We're going to set camera.current equal to the player that we're controlling. So we want to look out of the player's camera that we are using. All right. So now for the networking, because we're going to want to network our position over so other clients can see our position and they want to see our rotation. So how are we going to do that. Well, we're going to need a few extra nodes for that. They're not required, but I do like having them because it optimizes things a bit on the networking end. I'm going to add a timer. I'm just going to rename this timer to network tick rate. And I'm going to set the wait time to 0 0.03. Pretty small number. And all those start to true. Then I'm going to make a new tween. I'm going to rename this to movement tween. And that's everything. So this network tick rate, why, why do we have this? Well, we'll get into it after we start getting into our networking code. But we do want to get references to each of these nodes. So export node path network tick rate equals get node network tick rate as timer and movement tween as tween. So now we can go back in our player network tick rate and we can select that and movement tween and we can select that. And now we have all of our nodes selected and good. Now in our input event, this is going to be the first thing that we use our networking code. So we're, t we're moving our camera, right? This is our input event. We're moving the camera. We don't want to move the camera of other players with our inputs. So what are we going to do to check that? If is network master, meaning I'm the computer that's controlling this character. If I'm a, if I'm going to be in control this character, I want to make sure I'm only moving the head of the character I'm in control of. I don't want to move the head of other characters that are in the scene. It would kind of be weird if you're playing a multiplayer game and your head starts turning by another player. That's not what we want. So is network master. Same with all of this movement code right here. We still want to apply gravity to every player. So we don't really care about this, but the desired velocity, we want to say if is network master. And we're going to tab all of these over under network master. So we can only move and use our inputs if we control that player. If we are not a network master, this is where things start getting a little bit interesting. And I'm just going to put a pass right here for now because we're going to we're gonna get to this in a second. But first, we actually need to set up a few more variables and then we can get back to that. Under our velocity, we're going to set up puppet position, puppet velocity, and puppet rotation. We'll get into how puppets work once we actually start using the networking code. But we're going to make a function and it's going to say under this uh, physics process, we're going to make a new function. And it's going to say puppet function update state. It's going to take a position, a velocity, and a rotation. So all this is going to do is we're going to set our variable puppet position equal to P position. So first argument, puppet velocity equal to P velocity, puppet rotation equal to puppet rotation or P rotation right here. And when we call the state, we're going to put num we're going to put other numbers in here, these parameters, and this is going to update these variables to those parameters, right? Basic stuff. And then we're going to say movement tween that interpolate property on ourself global transform to our global transform. We're going to reconstruct the transform, the global transform.basis to our P position at 0.1. What the crap does this all mean? 
Well, essentially, we're interpreting the property, right, of global transform. Well, what's transform? Transform contains a basis, which is a, basically just a matrix containing the information about the object in the 3D space, right? And the position is the origin of the object or the location of the object in 3D space. So I can't really say global transform dot origin right here. That doesn't work when I'm interpreting a property like this. So I have to reconstruct the transform on my own. So we take global transform as the value that we're as our previous value and the new transform that we reconstruct from our old transform dot basis from our transform dot basis to our p position and we're moving to it so essentially this is a really fancy way of saying hey move from our previous position to our move our new position at the speed of 0 0.1 seconds right this is all this mumble jumble means and we're gonna say movement tween dot star so why are we why are we using this whole movement tween why does this matter well there's a there's a thing in video games thing that players don't like and it's it's called lag and lag is it sucks when we have lag just even the slightest bit of lag it's gonna look like they're teleporting all the time and like snapping the new positions we don't want that we want them to smoothly move between the positions so what we do we interpolate it we grab the position that they used to be in the position that they're in now and now we smoothly move to it this will make it so it's like not jittery you know it looks smooth it's a smooth transition so that's essentially what movement tween is going to be doing for our position which is going to be way nice we're going to connect network tick rate we're going to go to node timeout we're going to connect that back to our player network tick rate timeout if we are the network master when this tick rate goes off we're going to say rpc unreliable update state so what's the first thing what is rpc unreliable well essentially it's a remote procedure call well what's a remote procedure call well you know it's a function up here uh, update state right here that's the function we're calling this function and we're calling it on all the clients right all this client all the clients will receive this function right here update state what what does unreliable mean then well, in networking, there's two different ways. You got UDP and TCP. There's a few others, protocol stuff. But generally, TCP, UDP, stuff, what you're, most of the stuff you're going to be working with, right? TCP sends sockets or uh, packets or whatever you're sending, you know, packets, information. It sends that and it makes sure that it hits the client. So I'll send out packet saying, hey, hello world. And my friends will receive that packet, right? Well, they'll receive it, but it might take some time using TCP. TCP takes a while, but it ensures that my my friend receives hello world was unreliable mean well it's exactly how it sounds it's unreliable so if i send a packet with unreliable that means my friend might may or may not receive that packet but guess what they receive that packet really fast because i'm not verifying between the clients if that client actually received it because with tcp if i do send the packet and they never receive it it'll communicate that and it'll say hey i need to send that packet again because they never received it and so it just takes longer when we're making the multiplayer game we want things to update quickly we don't want it to take a while and so we're fine losing some packets we honestly every state doesn't need to be insured because we're sending them so quickly and so we need to make sure that we're we're just sending them quick enough that the player's updating smoothly. So that's essentially what we're doing here. So why are we doing it under network tick rate, right? We set up this whole network tick rate timer at 0 0.03. Why, why does that matter? We don't want to send packets 60 times a second. You might need that if you're having a really high speed game, but for this, I don't think you need that much packets. So I limited it to 30 FPS. We're sending 30 packets a second as our tick rate. Now the game's running at 60, but we're sending 30 packets a second and that should look just fine. Essentially, that's all that is. So what's, what's up with the rest of this function? Global transform dot origin, velocity, vector two, head rotation, what, what does this mean? Okay, well, look back at this function, update state. P position, we put in global transform dot origin, as our position. All right. And guess what? Our puppet position will be updated to this position. So all we're doing is we're broadcasting all of this data to all of the other clients. They're receiving this data and they're interpreting it and updating their local variables to this data we just sent out. So we're sending our positional data. We're sending our velocity data. We're going to deal with later because with velocity, we're going to use extrapolation, which is going to mitigate lag a lot more. And it's going to look smoother, especially when a client stops sending packets. They'll just keep moving the direction that they previously set up. Um, what's up with this? vector two head rotation dot x rotation dot y right this is our rotation right you just turn your head which turns up and down and you turn your character left or right on the y-axis right there is no z rotation so why would we send that out that, that's unused data so that's what we're doing we're just constructing a vector two and we'll interpret that vector two as a rotational data and be able to use it that way if we're not the network master we're not sending packets we're not updating our data because we're getting data updated from the other players right so there's no reason to run our tick rate timer if we're not going to send out that data anyways that's basically our network tick rate and that's our update state in conclusion we have all of our data being sent we have it being received but 
but it's not being interpreted. We need to interpret it and then we'll be able to see our players moving around in the scene. So what we do? Well, if we are not the network master in our physics process, then that's when we're going to be interpreting the positional data sent by other players. We're going to set velocity.x equal to puppet velocity.x, velocity.z equal to puppet velocity.z, and rotation.y equals puppet rotation.y, head.rotation.x equals puppet rotation.x. So essentially we are using all these values that we stored down here and we are applying them to our actual velocity and rotation values and our head value, which was this constructed vector two right here. So essentially we are applying those values to our, our characters transform and stuff. Then we want to check if movement tween is not active, then we'll apply our velocity. All right, so there's one more line of code that we actually forgot to interpret. So right before velocity, it honestly doesn't matter, but I like it here. Um, we're gonna say global transform dot origin equals puppet position. This completes all of our data and this is this is everything. So why do we not move in our velocity and move in slide if the movement tween is not active, right? Why does that matter? That's because we update our, po our position, our origin every tick rate, right? So we're constantly updating our position. We are not actually moving, like we're not actually moving and sliding. We're not actually detecting collision we're just moving to what position our client says now this might be a terrible approach if you're trying to make something that's secure you know that clients can't hack but this works for us so so this movement tween if we stop receiving update states then it's just gonna keep moving in the direction that was previously sent because we send our velocity which is interpreted up here which is applied and if we are active then it's going to be applying that velocity and keep moving in that direction if we do keep receiving packets though updating our state then we'll just keep updating our position and we won't be adding our velocity to our move and slide state so essentially if player doesn't send a packet in a long time they'll keep moving in their direction and if they do send a packet and they're like kind of shifted it will automatically update their position to where they are are actually which you know lag compensation it looks nicer when you have them keep moving rather than an abrupt teleport to that position it's just something extra that you can add and that's literally everything you can you can run the game now to run it on both clients i'm gonna host i'm gonna join in and they can see each other and we can jump and we can turn and we can do everything and you can see we are moving around i hope you guys enjoyed this networking course tutorial the source code for this project and all of my other projects are on my patreon so if you're interested and supporting me that helps me a lot and yeah that that's this video hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys in the next one